On today's show, you know what? We're going to step backwards. We're going to go back in time a little bit and see how gourmet fishing or fishing book kind of sort of came to be. We're going to step back into the uh, early to mid 2000s and take a look at some of my work that I had done on variety cooking along with a couple of my early episodes of gourmet fishing and one a little a little a little a little later than than that uh, about 2015 we did a um, a uh, spring red drum show so that's there also oh down below the, all the recipes that we uh, that you're gonna be seeing uh, here in a few minutes we've got those down there uh, uh, in the link below that y'all can y'all can get a hold of those and they're still pretty good recipes <laughs> hadn't changed that much so I tell you what hey welcome to gourmet fishing I'm your host David Murray so why don't we go ahead and, and kind of step back in time right now Welcome to Gourmet Fishing. I'm your host, David Murray. On today's show, it's early spring. The dogwoods are blooming, and it's time for us to get in the salt marsh creeks and catch some red drum. Now, this time of the year, water temperatures are rising. Those large, massive winter schools of red drum are splintering into smaller schools, and they're coming into creeks looking for something to eat. And that's where we come into the picture. Now, we're going to be working some man-made structure, some natural structure, with a GFSC rig with a snelled circle hook baited with a moomichog. So don't go away. And that's right, you heard me, I said moomichog. So when we come back, I'm gonna introduce you to the GFSC rig and get you up close and personal with the moomichog. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Welcome to Gourmet Fishing. I'm David Murray. Let's go catch some speckled trout. I'm David Murray. Welcome to Gourmet Fishing. Today we're in beautiful Beaufort, South Carolina, on the Broad River, and we're looking for cobia. We're gonna drown some eels, hopefully entice them to munch down on a few of those little weird green snake looking things. So don't go away, we'll be right back. Its intensity may be more than some wish to be exposed to, and those people should. Today, we're going to use these little popping corks, and uh, they're all kind of uh, manufacturers that put these out. I like this one. It's put out. Uh, it's called uh, uh, the old Bayside Paradise Popper, and the reason I like this one over over one like this is this rod right here. It's a titanium leader that's been crimped. And you can bend it, you can do everything in the world to it, and it actually comes back straight. Perfect. This one, on the other hand, if you try to do that, and we're going to do it, look what happens. And trying to get this thing back to being straight is almost impossible, and the cork doesn't work well. So that being said, let's actually create a rig that we're going to use for live bait. Welcome back to the show. Before I introduce you to the Mumi Chog, we need to take a look at our rig. The GFSC rig consists of a bobber stop knot, which you can buy at the store. It comes with a little small bead, and that prevents the cork from sliding up. Then we have a 3 8 ounce egg sinker, and this is a size 12 barrel swivel tied from the main line with a palomar knot. Then our monofilament leader is also tied to this swivel with a palomar knot. And a snelled circle hook. This is a gamagatsu one aught octopus circle hook. Now, let me get you up close and personal with the mumi chog. Come right down here. All right, one of the things that cobia love to do is eat eels. They got them little swimming snakes in there, so this is uh, not one of my most favorite things to do, but we're going to go ahead and give it a shot. Catch one of these and hook them up. Look at that thing. Best way to get them, I found, is a dry towel. 
there's our eel. Yum, yum. Using a circle hook. It's a seven aught. Come, I got to open up right through the bottom lip. We can let him go. My rig of choice for Cobia, Gamagatsu 7 ounce circle hook, 50 pound leader, and I like to snell my hooks to the line. So I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. We can take our line, insert it through the eye, make a large loop, lay the tag in down the shank, and I will pinch the eye with the line like this. And, I'll, and we take this, rotate it over, we're going to start making about 10 loops. And every time I make a loop, I try to keep it tight against the previous one, just like this. Two, four, five, six, seven. We can count two, eight, nine. This will, oop, this will be our last one. I'm going to take my middle finger, put pressure there, and take these two fingers. This is a handful. We've got everything in one hand. Take the line and draw it tight. And then take this tag in and pull it. Pull tight, and trim this off, and we're ready to fish. We have a couple of dark areas right here and right here. Those are the internal organs. That's what makes him click. We do not want to pierce that with our hook because that'll kill him. So what we're going to do is we're going to attempt to get this hook just in front of his brain, just like that. And he's still alive. Let's give this a shot. There we are. All right. So what we got? Something going on? Yeah, looks like a trout. Oh man, here we go. There he comes, coming up to the top. There he is. Yes, sir. There we go, that's what I'm talking about. Looks like a little guy though, daggone it. Well, then again, maybe not. Maybe not. Let's see. He's coming back behind us. Oh, damn, there he is. All right, fish on. See what this is. Mm hmm. Got a little pull, a little pull. What do we got? What do we have? Breaking the water. Oh, there we are. A little red drum. Yes, sir. Show us your tail. Right in the corner of the mouth. That's what I like about a circle hook. Nice. There he is. Got two spots on one side, one on the other. Pretty little fish, any. Believe that the spot on the spot of a red drum is to help fool predators into thinking that the tail is actually the head. And this aids the red drum in escaping during an attack. You know, red drones with no spots, they're fairly uncommon. And, and our dinner guest, well, that's a very unique guest indeed. All right, this is another one going in the cooler and he's going back to the outdoor kitchen with us for black and red fish and red rice. So stay tuned, we'll be right back. Hey, welcome to what I call Murray Key in the outdoor kitchen. Now, before we get started, I want to clarify the menu just a little bit. And when we were on the boat, I made this statement. 
All right, this is another one going in the cooler, and he's going back to the outdoor kitchen with us for blackened redfish and red rice. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Well, that's almost correct. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to spice the menu up just a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to prepare a sesame crusted black and red drum. We're going to serve that with a Charleston sweet red rice. And then we're going to finish the dish off with a tropical low country slaw. But if you take a look at this rice, it's, um, it's, it's, it really is black. And legend has it is that it was, it was grown for the emperors of uh, China. And it was supposed to ensure longevity and health of the emperor. I don't know about that. Well, we're going to, we're basically going to dump our rice in a pot, which is one cup. Then what I've got here, I've got, I've got chicken stock and a little bit of water. I put uh, basically a one and a half cups of chicken stock and a little bit of water in here to bring it up to one and three quarters just to cut down a little bit of the saltiness. I'll bring this over here on the stove. I'm going to bring it up to a boil and then we're going to reduce it to a slow simmer after it boils. Well, it's basically long grain rice and black eyed peas. And it's cooked down in the, in, in the stock that the peas are cooked in. And let's start with our stock. That is going to be a tablespoon of butter that's melted. And we have, uh, right here, I'm using a Vidalia onion. You can use whatever onion you want. Uh, I like the little bit of the sweetness that the Vidalia uh, adds to the dish. We're going to saute that. And then we're going to add this thing here, which is called a ham hock. It's not very appetizing, but it gives unbelievable flavor uh, to a stock, to a soup, uh, especially what we're getting ready to add to the rice. And this is the knee portion of a pig that's been smoked. And like I said, it's not the most appetizing looking thing in the world, but it really does add a lot of flavor to what you're cooking. All right, we've got our stock boiling. We're extracting those great flavors from this ham hock. After this cooks down for about 15, 20 minutes, we'll add our peas. Black-eyed peas, uh, if you take a look at them, are basically a, 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 a uh, I guess you could say, a semi-white pea with a black eye. To our stock. And allow them to come back to a boil and cook for about 30 minutes. In the steamer, we've got a cup of long grain rice. We're going to add our stock, and now we're going to add our black-eyed peas. And that is the foundation for Hoppin' John. Give her a, a stir, incorporate everything, get it situated. We'll bring this to a rolling boil. You'll see the steam begin to come up, and then we'll turn the heat down to about medium. And then uh, about an hour later, you've got Hoppin' John. But before we get moving, we need to come up with a cocktail. So, you know, keep, keep the old whistle wet while we, you know, prepare everything. So I'm going to prepare what I call a Murray Key Goombe Smash. Now, I've spent a little bit of time down in the Bahamas, the Abaco Islands, actually. And each little island bar and restaurant seems to have their own variation of the scumbe. And keeping them with that tradition, that's what I'm gonna show you. So we're gonna take one part white rum, one part dark rum, one part pineapple rum. Now we're going to move over and do two parts coconut rum. And then finish it off with three parts of a spice rum. And there you go, that's close enough. Now, this right here is the heart and soul of the Goombe Smash. So we need to get us a, uh, a glass of ice. And this is where you can control the potency of your drink. I'm a half and half guy. You know, maybe that's one of the little demons I got to deal with. But anyway. Now, we're going to grab a little bit of grenadine for a little bit of color. Grenadine is cherry juice and pomegranate juice. And then we're going to finish it off with a little pineapple 
orange. And there you go. That's the Mariki Goombay Smash. Now, we need to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll get started on the menu. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Let's see. I'm coming here with a couple of nice spoonfuls. Like this. There we go. And we'll take our fish. Position it. Like that. We could, we could add a little bit of the soy sauce on the outside corners, like this. Just a little splash on top. We'll take two pieces of our butter, like this, like that. Take a few little scallions for color, like that. Take a little bit of, this is actually cilantro, which will give us a little bit, of, a little bit more color. Come on, let go. Just like that. Move this out of the way. And that's our, our lime crusted trout with forbidden rice. All right, I tell you, it's been about an hour. Man, this thing is looking good. That's your hopping John right there. I tell you what, we need to give it a taste. Make sure we don't need to do anything else to it. It's hot now, so be careful. Not bad. It's hot, not bad. Our Hoppin' John's ready. We brought our sauce back from the dead. Now it's time to pull the Wahoo out and plate it up. Remember, hot oven. Use something so you don't burn yourself. Oh, man, there you go. How's that look? All right. Now, bring our Hoppin' John over. That looks good too. Got a little bit of a uh, double plate action here. Have fun when you're trying to plate something up. Make, make it look good. I'm going to add a good helping of Hoppin' John. Like that. Now, I'm going to take our fish. Piece here. Piece here. In our plate, we made a mess. That a little bit of color. Have fun with it. Just like that. Oop. Having problems with chives today. Now our sauce we brought back. Excited about that. a lot better than it did, doesn't it? Take a little bit of our sauce, add on the top, fizzle it around. A bit of parsley. And here we go. That is macadamia nut crusted Wahoo with Hoppin' John. All right, it's time to plate our menu. We're gonna get started with our red rice. Oh, look at that, look at, look at there. Mm. Come on one side, we can add us some rice, Just like that. Okay, Woo, look at that sausage. We got those onions and we got some peppers. I'm gonna come in with our fish. Like this, and like this. Oh, yes, sir. Now, again, I told you earlier the best utensil you have are your fingers. Come in, we're going to add a nice little serving of our tropical low country slaw. Look at there. How about that? Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Now, there's our plate. We have sesame crusted black and red drum, Charleston sweet red rice, a little tropical low country slaw, and the Murray Key Goombay Smash. 
Thanks for joining us today. I hope you picked up a couple of tips that'll help you out on your next fishing trip. And I really hope you try the lime crusted trout. It's, it really is delicious. But join us next week. We have a little family fun. Uh, my son's gonna join me and we, uh, we can do a little fishing. We can do a little cooking. But most of all, we're gonna make some memories that'll last forever. So I hope you do the same and take a kid fishing. We'll see y'all next week. Hey, thanks for joining me today. I hope you learned a little something about Beaufort's Broad River Cobia fishing. Something you can take with you the next time you're down there fishing on the Broad River. And the, uh, the recipe, uh, you know, it's Wahoo, but it's a very simple recipe to substitute Cobia for the Wahoo. So don't forget to make memories that'll last you a lifetime and take your kids fishing. We'll see y'all next time. Well, you know, weather isn't always perfect at Murray Key, but you know, take a look at the, uh, the plates here. It looks like the crew had a good time with it. And uh, I tell you what, I hope y'all uh, get yourself a couple of dozen Moomy Chogs on your next trip out and give the sliding cork rig a shot. And also, hey, try out the menu. I, you know, it's not too terribly tough. The red rice is, yeah, you know, it takes a couple of hours to cook, but um, I think it'll be definitely well worth the wait. So hope to see you out here next time. And don't forget to make memories that'll last you a lifetime and take your kids fishing. We'll see y'all later.